Set on the southeastern edge of the biggest coastal laguna, Laguna de Cartasca, some 110 kilometers east of Brua's Laguna, Puerto Limpira is the largest town in Mesquita and the home of 25 of the most beautiful orphan children. The children live with Mama Terra, a Mosquito woman in her 80s. In 2002, Mama Terra was officially organized and called Mama Terra Mosquito Orphanage. And this organization has been sponsoring the children and building an orphanage in which the children will grow up safe, strong, and knowing the Lord. Let me introduce you to Mama Terra and let her tell you how it all began. Why did you form the orphanage? How are you saying? Why did you form the orphanage? Oh, why I turn my heart to do this? I pray and talk to God. I say, God, cure me. Cure Everybody say, this sickness that I had, the tumor that coming out three times is cancer. Only you know if it's true or not. If it's true, cure me. Cure me and you, I want you to help me with my children in school and college. Make them learn something in college. And from there, I help you. I want you to help me with the same money that I will use it to my children. I will use it with children that no had father, people that no had nobody to help. After Mama Tara contracted breast cancer, she asked God for one favor. Let her live to take care of her children, and she would live to take care of God's. And even though it's been an ongoing battle in a country riddled with political corruption, with a subculture of people with a poverty mentality, she's been faithful with that promise. In the mosquito culture, most women usually begin forming relationships at about age 15, and most become mothers by 18. Most women have six to eight children with their husband, but since men are not around, there's a high abandonment and divorce rate. Men often feel no moral obligation to take care of children because of a high illegitimacy rate. And it's extremely difficult for women to find jobs. Most rely on their men and their income to support their children. The gender roles within the mosquito culture are affected by more of the boom and bust of the local economy. When there are few job opportunities, men rely on agricultural work and they spend time within their respective communities. But since the 1990s, most men have been traveling as a result of an increase in job opportunities in other areas, and they spend significant amounts of time away from their village. Currently, most men work on fishing boats and similar jobs, diving for lobster and spending eight months out of the year away from their families. It's been these challenges that have contributed to the needs and challenges that Mama Tara has been working so hard to correct. It's been these challenges that have brought about tragic circumstances, like Bexy Ilupo Dixon. She has a younger brother at the orphanage, and his name is Edgar. She was so tiny and undernourished when she first arrived. She had a distended belly and sores all over her body. She was starving for attention and food. The living conditions that she came from were no father at home, an alcoholic mother who neglected all of her children. She would leave them for days at a time. She had at least three other siblings, Belky and Richard, and a little brother, Edgar. Their mother taught their older children to steal things, to try and sell for money, but she usually just bought more alcohol. The children were mostly on their own. Bexie was not one you could miss. She was tiny and dirty and very skinny. She was full of emotion and either very happy, very sad, or very, very angry. And then there's McCleaver Sadia Gomez. He came to the orphanage at the age of four. McCleaver comes from a dysfunctional family where both parents are alcoholics, and the father was exceptionally hard on McCleaver because he wasn't able to walk and speak as a young toddler. He didn't even want to feed the child. Other people heard of this distressing situation and brought the news to Mama Tara. She asked his parents if he could come live with her in the orphanage, and they agreed, and he came to stay in 2002. Mama Tara taught him to speak, and he is now perfectly normal. And Edwin whose mother died a little over two years before he came to the Mama Terra Mosquito Orphanage. 
Shortly after her death, his father remarried. At the request of the stepmother, Edwin was kicked out of the house. He spent two years roaming the streets from house to house until he found someone that mentioned Mama Terra Orphanage. They stated that he could go there, better his education, find food, and a place to sleep. And so he walked six hours from his village to Mama Terra. He's 14 years old now. It's situations like these that make the Mama Terra Orphanage a necessity, but it's people like you who make it a possibility. It's our sincere hope that these testimonies and stories have touched and changed your life and that you'll one day become a part of them as well. And I'd like to leave you with one final message from Mama Tara herself. I need help with this um, orphanatorio Mama Tara.